Good morning, friends. Good morning. Welcome to our contemporary service this morning at Christ of the Hills. We are so happy that you're here, and we ask you to stand and join us because we are all equal at the foot of the cross. <laughs> to do a certain thing it's grace that saves us and puts makes us evil uh, e equal not evil equal in his <laughs> eyes <laughs> so uh, our first scripture is Matthew 7 verses 13 and 14 enter through the narrow gate for wide is the gate and broad is the road that leads to destruction and men are, many enter through it but small is the gate and narrow the road that leads to life and only a few find it and we have found it. 
let's sing about that when we talk about that was then, this is now. There should be some changes in our lives that Christ has made evident that we put away the past things and we strive towards his calling in our lives. We used to hide from the light We made friends with the night We were headed the wrong way on a one-way track Going nowhere fast We got used to the dark We thought this is who we are And we figured that we were just too far gone But we were wrong Just love the road like a river we got washed in the water, then he said, you're forgiven, your sins are gone, that was sin, this is now, you're bought by the blood, saved by the sun, the saints all sing about, that was lost, this is found, and it's time to say goodbye to the old you now. So go ahead and put the past in the past. Box it up like an old photograph We don't have to go back Cause that was then And this is now We've been remade by grace We all got new names And nothing we do could ever change What he did that day When love came rolling like a river We got washed in the water Then he said you're forgiven and you belong that was then This is now You're bought by the blood Saved by the sun The saints all sing about That was lost This is found And it's time to say Goodbye to the old you now So go ahead and put the past in the past Box it up like an old photograph We don't have to go back Cause that was then if we turn and confess every unrighteousness, He is faithful and just to forgive. So turn and confess every wrong and regret, and see what it means to live. That was then, this is now. Walk by the blood, saved by the sun, the saints all sing about that was lost. This is found, and it's time to say goodbye to the old you now. Cause that was then, and this is now. Cause that was then, and this is now. Maybe seated. Yes. That what? What? No, no, no. Don't just. He's got them here now. Don't let them go. Yeah. They were easy to count now. I mean, that was that was good. That was, holy cow. That's all right. All right. So glad that you are here with us. I am Pastor Stephen Fries. Welcome to the gathering. This is the well that is behind me. Uh, we're so glad that you are here. And for all of those who in the very back row are worshiping with us as well. Now, a lot of different things are happening. Um, on October the 4th and 5th, we are going to have our 24-hour prayer vigil. All right? One of the things that I am going to need is I'm going to need um, five individuals to meet with me and let's talk because my decorator is now somewhere in Europe, okay? And, and so what I, no, honestly, what I'd like to do, I have some ideas um, and I know I've got some help from, uh, from I got one person I know is gonna help as well, um, but just, I would like for you to take one of the themes and how would you decorate? And we've got a lot of stuff that's in our office and, and, and things over there that we can use and stuff. You may have a different idea. Uh, when we're going to pray for uh, uh, America, we can use the American flag. We're going to pray for ourselves over here. We can use mirrors. Uh, I mean, there's all different kinds of opportunities and, and different ways. So if that very last week, um, because that last Sunday of the month, everybody here is going to help take chairs and stack them up and move them to the back. 
because this whole area will be a giant prayer vigil. Um, and so, but that'll be the very last week. But I am going to need some help. If, if you'd like to volunteer to, to um, help decorate, and I, I can give you a theme, but I, I just need to know some, some help on that. But please sign up. If you haven't signed up yet, there are still great hours that are left. Um, and and don't, don't make the mistake, okay? You can pray for an hour. You really can. And in fact, there's most people that come out of there going, I had to take longer because I wasn't finished. Yeah, and so um, it's, it's very good. Now, on September the 22nd, okay, September the 22nd, our church is going to put on a, a membership drive. This is where, where so many people are going to join the church. We've got uh, 11 people so far that have said yes. If you are not a member of the church, you've been here a while and would love to be a member of the church, I've got some forms here. I'd love for you to fill one out. And on, on September 22nd, where to come, um, we, we are honored on that day because on September 22nd will be the first baptism that I know of that we will be doing here in the gathering. Yay. Yes, yes, yes. And so when it, in the Methodist church, if an adult gets baptized, they become an automatic member of the church. And so um, this person has been... Uh, grow up in the church and stuff, and so we got a chance to talk, and she said, yeah, I want to be baptized, and so awesome. So this will be our first one here, um, and then we've got uh, four other people that we know for definite are wanting to join the church, and so we're so excited about that. If you are one of them that would, you know, would love, I, I've, I've, got, I've got these here, love for you to pick one up, fill it out, okay, um, and, but if, if you're thinking, well, I'll take it, maybe, don't know, I don't know. And 22nd gets here and says, well, I didn't, Pastor, I didn't fill out the form. I'm not worried about the form. We'll get that information, okay? All right. Uh, I, want to, I want to bring you in as a member of the church because you are so gifted people, uh, all y'all. So we'd love to have you, okay? The, um, there was, oh, um, midweek manna. That was the other one I wanted to talk about. We started this last week. We, I didn't get a chance. To, I, I forgot all about of announcing it. Uh, Reverend Sheila Jones is the one that leads the mid, midweek manna. And so um, she does a great job. So every Wednesday at 5 o'clock, it's a half-hour service. They do communion. Uh, they do singing. And we'd love for you to be a part of that. She'd love for you to attend. It's right there in the middle of the week. Uh, many people have asked about the United Methodist men's golf outing. Uh, what I do know is that we have 128 people who are going to be golfing. I do not know what's going to happen with the rain. Okay? I have been asked to pray and make sure it doesn't. I do not have that power. Okay? I do not have that power. Um, but I can, I can always ask for everybody. And we, we, but brothers and sisters, we need the rain really bad. We really do. But just not Monday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 I did that one time. Um, uh, a pastor friend or a, a member of the church asked me, um, not this church, another church, and said, Pastor, we need rain. We need rain. And I said, okay, I'll pray for rain. That afternoon, it started raining. Friday, it quit. We got eight inches. And so they came back and said, Pastor, have you ever heard of a man by the name of Noah? And I'm going, no, you weren't specific about this. So when I moved to another church, he goes, Pastor, we, big farmers, we need rain. And I told him that story. He said, oh, okay. An inch and three quarters over 11 hours of time. I said, I'll do what I can. I just don't, you know, bless your hearts. It's so great. All right, but we're, we're going to do that. So thank you so much uh, for being part of worship. Do you have a celebration that you would like to share? Yes. <laughs> yeah, we are too. We are so glad to be home. Yes, 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 yes. Um, we had a great visit at the doctor this week, and Ed is scheduled in October for the final skin graft. Oh, the final skin graft in October. All right, yes, yes, all right. Praise be to God. Yes. <laughs> Doug, doesn't have, Doug doesn't have a serious face on. <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, yeah, we all do changes and stuff. So, so Olivia's got some red hair now, but that's okay. That's all right. It's awesome. Yeah. Sassy. Yeah, she was already that, but that's okay. Um, and yes, Terry. Okay, yes, yes, all right. Well, the root canal on, on what, Friday? Thursday. Thursday, yes. Okay, so if by chance you look Reverend Sig square in the mouth, okay, because I'm guessing he's probably at least taller than most of us, okay? But if you look, you will see a large bruise. He also had a root canal, okay, and they're not finished. And so that was the aftermath of... And, and so we were trying to, you know, think of something more exciting than root canal. And, and he suggested that Sherry just hauled off and popped him. But I'm going, yeah, but everybody would believe that. But that, <laughs> yeah, you know, that's all right. But yeah, that's, that's what he's, he's got going. So any other celebrations? Yes. Yes, 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 hallelujah, all right, yeah, we, I'm, yeah, we've been there, we have, yes, any other celebrations, oh, that's awesome, thank you for that, all right, all right, well, one of our great celebrations is to receive God's tithes and offerings, um, I'm hoping that you, you printed out or wrote out on the uh, connection pads there, drop them in, but let us Receive that now. Our next scripture is from Revelation 5, verse 12. In a loud voice they were saying, Worthy is the Lamb who is slain to receive power and wealth and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and praise. Worthy is our God. <laughs> Thank you for the price you paid, bearing all my sin and shame. In love you came and gave amazing grace. Thank you for this love, Lord. Thank you for the nail Washed me in your cleansing flow. Now all I know, your forgiveness and embrace. Worthy is the Lamb, seated on the throne.
this morning. Mackenzie and Brian. Mackenzie and Brian. Sarah. Sarah. Jeremiah, Esme, Chip. Jeremiah, Esme, and Chip. And Kristen. And Kristen. Cinnamon and Jacqueline. Cinnamon and Jacqueline. Rachel, and Rachel and Unspoken. David, Lou, and Chris. David, Lou, and Chris. Madison. And their family? Ron and Kim. Ron and Kim. Tim and Mary. Tim and Mary. Kim and Kelly. Kim and Kelly. Gina. Gina. Mike, Teresa, and Tina. Mike, Teresa, and Tina. Joe. Joe. Kathy. Kathy. Jennifer. Jennifer. Rick. Karen. Karen. Traveling Mercies. Ford and Laura. Ford and Laura, yeah. And you know, Laura's never met a stranger in her life. <laughs> God help Europe. Am I really? Yeah. Just, just. Oh, I know. She'll have their phone number before too long. Sorry. We, we, I tell you what, she is such a blessing. She really is. The whole family is. So. Well, let's go before the Lord in prayer. Almighty and gracious God, we come to you and we say thank you so much. We thank you for this time with you, this time of worship, this time of connecting. It's corporate worship. Father, help us in our individual worship. When Monday gets here and Wednesday happens and Thursday takes place, All the days of the weeks we have opportunities to worship. Worship you in our jobs. Worship you in our time of rest. Worship you when we're just relaxing on the couch or when we're cooking a meal. Let us worship you. Father God, you've heard all these names. You know the situations. You know the circumstances. That which is unspoken or un familiar to us we know you we know that you know the details for those who needed healing Lord give them healing for those who need a calmness in the chaos give them the calmness for those who need comfort in the hurt give them comfort 
Father, help those recognize that which is happening with them. Those people that you put in their paths to do just that. You provide instruments of grace. Help us to be instruments of grace to all that we see. Father, I lift up this church. And Father, we do lift up tomorrow. Now, if it be our will, we would have the sun shining. It'd be about 70 degrees out. And yes, there's going to be 119, maybe 120 golfers, maybe even more than that, that when their first tee shot hits, that it goes in the middle of the fairway. Further than the other tee box. We all know that. But Father, it's not our will. It's your will be done. Whatever transpires, however it all comes about, Father God, may you be praised. You be glorified. Lord God, we ask all these things in your holy and precious name. And as you have taught us to pray, let us sing about that now in your holy word. Father, let your kingdom come. Father, let your will be done on earth as in heaven right here in my heart. Father, let your kingdom come Father, let your will be done on earth as in heaven, right here in my heart. On earth as in heaven, right here in my heart. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us, forgive us, as we forgive the ones who sin against us. Forgive them and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Let your kingdom come. It's yours, it's yours, all yours, all yours, the kingdom of passage of scripture that I have is one we've been working on all all this month in September here. It's in the passage of Hebrews, the 12th chapter, beginning in verse 1 and going to verse 3. It said, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. And let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. 
Consider him who endured such opposition from sinners so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Will you bow your heads for a moment of prayer? Almighty and gracious God, I pray that you will rescue me from me. Lord, I ask that you would allow me for this time to be an instrument of your grace. Be given the words that you want me to share. That you place it on the hearts that need to have them placed. But Father, in all of this, you and only you be given glory. It's in your name that we pray. Amen. Amen. This morning we are on number three of our series that comes from the book Don't Give Up by Kyle Eidelman. The first session that we had was to listen to the crowd and then we expanded that with talking about the hall of fame of faith and now today we're going to throw off the weight. Throw off the weight. Now what we've shared and what this book is, is premises us, it says first of all, sometimes we want comfort but what we need is courage. Sometimes we look for sympathy when we need to search for strength. At times we want people to feel sorry for us, but what we need is for them to challenge us. As we shared before, we want a coach to tell us, we desire this. Come, get a drink, take a break, take a moment, take a rest, put your feet up. It's okay. Just take some time. But in reality, we need a coach that says, suck it up. Wuss. Have you ever been a part of a team that had that? Yeah. Come on, suck it up. It's not over. The game's not over. You're not done. Fight to the end. Don't give up. I love this cartoon. <laughs> Just don't give up. The author of Hebrews tells us the answer. He says, fix your eyes on Jesus. Put your focus on Christ. That's the theme of the entire book of Hebrews. Jesus is superior. He is superior to our challenges, superior to our circumstances we face, the situations that we are dealing with. Jesus is better than all of that. The word superior is written 15 different times in the book of Hebrews. The author is confident of the superiority of Jesus. And this gives us courage. This gives us strength. Jesus is that strength. Early Christians were enthusiastic and had excitement with determination to tell people about Jesus. It was right fresh. It was right there. They were out ready to go out. They were ready to share all of that. And then life happens. We don't know what that means, life happening. Persecutions, oppositions, cultural ridicule of their faith in Jesus. They grew tired and it made it hard for them to keep going. Does that sound familiar? The author is filling them and us with courage, saying Jesus is worth it because Jesus is better. So what are those things that hinder? If we look at that, that definition, the, the word in the Greek to throw off, it's a compound word that means, and to set aside and hear this church, okay, the compound word of throw off, is it means to set aside and to push it out of reach. To not only set it aside, but to put it out of reach. Get it out of the way. Picture this. If you've ever seen sports and baseball particularly, you ever see a pop-up at home plate, all right? And the catcher, well, the first thing they do is they take off their mask. And before they catch that ball, the next thing that they do is they chunk it. That is trained in them. It's not something they just automatically pick up. It's trained in them. Why? So that they can move around without tripping over it. And you got some of those guys, they sit there and they flip that mask off. And they, and I mean, it's in the next county. They have to have, have a car go out there and get it before they can bring it back. Oh, church, if we would take those items that we need to throw off and not just push it out of the way, 
but push it before, beyond our reach. And then whatever slows us out, down, we are to get rid of. The word hinders means any kind of weight. If we are in a race that is long and difficult, any weight, even small weight, can be managed for a little while, but then no matter the determination, the weight will slow you down. You can do this as an example. Take a book. Take your favorite book. Take a small book. Take a devotional book. Stick it out here and just hold it. After a while, no matter how long you... it start to be heavy. So whatever weight that is. Now, there are three common weights that slow us down. Number one is the anxiety and the pressure of life. We call it stress. We call it stress. You ever been stressed? Are you living in stress? Matthew 13, 22, the seed falling among the thorns refers to someone who hears the word, but the worries of this life and the deceitfulness of wealth choke the word, making it unfruitful. The pressures of life choke out the work of faith. It's like running a race with a bad case of asthma. You want to, you are determined to, but when you run, you can barely breathe. What are examples? Trying to make ends meet with a limited amount of income. Your mind is on a biopsy where the test results are not in yet. You're thinking of a child or grandchild that you're watching self-destruct. You were doing okay, the race was going fine, but then you got strapped with a large weight. A big hindrance that the Bible highlights is a weight back then and today. This is number two. A weight that is one that we need to get rid of is religion. Yeah, I know. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, wait a minute, Pastor, faith and religious are synonymous. They, they should be interchangeable. They should go together. But see, the Hebrews and the Galatians and through, all throughout the New Testament had a problem with this. They had a problem with the religious leaders. And here's why they had a problem with that. Because they were Christians. They were Jewish Christians who were following Jesus, but they had the weight of Judaism. They were trying to focus on the race, but Christ, but they had the pressure from others, the expectations of their heritage and traditions they were expected to keep. Oh my word, it wasn't very long ago that you couldn't raise your hand in a Methodist church. Oh my word, they went Pentecostal on you, Pastor. You gotta watch that. And I've got to be very honest with you. There's some folks in the traditional service would have a trouble with that. But in this service, when we want to say amen, we'll sit there and go, yeah. thank you very much. It's all right. But see, here's where the problem is. You want to have faith, but the weight of failure, shame, and guilt that comes from religion is often too overwhelming because there's people in the church, in many churches, all throughout the land of churches that want to become the judge, the jury, and the executioner. See, what the problem is, what they don't understand, it's not religion, it's relationship. It's not ritual, it's relationship. Now, the last one is the struggle of sin. This is number three. We have different struggles, different temptations that keep tripping us up. But repentance, confession, accountability, you throw off this weight. Hebrews 12, 1 says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, now get this, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. And let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. In verse 4, it says, In your struggle against sin, you have not yet resisted to the point of shedding your blood. The Hebrew writer telling us that we are not bleeding yet, so get back in the game. Sin will build a wall between us and God. And here's the kicker. With sin, we will say it's God's fault for building the wall when it was us. 
And it discourages us not to want to do anything that sep thus separates us from God. In verse 1, the author writes the sin that so easily entangles, and that is the sin of unbelief. Now, I know, God, you did this, and you did... That's why I have a problem with Moses and the Exodus. What's it going to take to get you through your head that he pounded the Red Sea, got you, boogity, 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 went over to the other side. He did this, he did this, he did this, he did this. And then I'm sitting there going, Steve, you're talking about yourself. When you're not going to get it, he got you through this, he got you through this. My word, Pastor, he got you through Greek class. Because you have trouble with English. He got you through all of these things. Why are you doubting? And see, we could put our own scenarios in that, couldn't we? Yeah. Because in seminary, you have this greenhorn understanding. Oh, that first baby I get to baptize is going to be a blonde-haired, blue-eyed little girl. Mm-hmm. That first wedding is going to be this in the church wedding decorated from here. Doves are going to fly out of the sanctuary. It's going to be perfect. And your first funeral was going to be a patriarch or a matriarch of the church. And it was going to be a homecoming. He gave me the baptism. She was the prettiest blue-eyed, blonde-haired girl I've ever seen. My first wedding was an outdoor wedding where the best man handed a spider ring and liked to freak the bride out half to death. <laughs> and my first funeral was a 20-year-old suicide victim. And through each one, God said, I've got this. I've got this. You're okay. I've got this. Keep going. Don't give up. So unbelief. With unbelief, life pressures and stress becomes more overwhelming. Uncertainties of future don't know what is going to happen next. Hebrews 11.1. 1. Now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. And with this pressure this, and stress can be set aside and we can keep moving forward to continue the running of the race. How about Moses' mother? Oh man, Pharaoh was killing the Hebrew children. So she puts Moses in this basket, sets it on the Nile River, takes, lets it take off. And I love Prince of Egypt, although it's a cartoon, because uh, it gave this kind of an understanding. You know, in our mind, we think, oh, ooh, ooh, it's going to be fine, you know. But there's crocodiles in the Nile. There's all these other animals in the Nile. And it had to be great anxiety for her, but she believed in God. She had faith. She ran the race before her. Now, one of the best ways I can, I can share about faith, okay? And I did this one of the first, we had a children's lesson I wanted to share with them was about faith, Okay? So I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not going to ask her to come up, okay? Because I would just freak her out, all right? But Amelia and, and Philip, all right? Okay, so, no, I was, you thought it was pointing. Man, she's squirming, and she? She was moving. And like, you ain't pointing at me. I'm not doing this. But I had a, I had a child about her, her size, okay? And so what I did was I, I sit there, and I put her on, on the pew, we had pews in that church, and I said, please do not move. I'm like, lawsuit. Please do not move, all right? I had her turn around and face the congregation, and her dad was tall like you, you know, muscular, all right? You know, ripped abs the whole nine yards, just like you, okay? All right? And I said, I'm going to put him behind you. I said, would you have a problem with falling backwards? I don't want you to do it, but if you fell backwards... How many people in this church would believe that he was going to catch her? And they all raised their hand. And I said, yes, that would be great if we got that kind of faith situation. But we don't. And I took the little girl and I said, here, stand back here. Put your arms out. Close your eyes. 
Then I looked at the dad, and I was like, get on the chair. <laughs> and he went, mm. I said, that's the faith situation that we get, isn't it? Because we're sitting there going, there's no way. That's called unbelief. That's called unbelief. That's the best way I can share faith. Jesus is better than whatever it is that you are going through, that which stresses you out. The unre unreasonable boss, the critical spouse, the unruly kids, stresses of life. Jesus is better. Have faith. Don't give up. In the last part of Matthew eleven twenty-eight 28 through 29, this is a paraphrase that says, Are you tired and worn out? Are you burned out on religion? Come to me. Get away with me. You'll recover your life. I'll show you how to take a real rest. Walk with me. Watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. I won't put any heavy weight on you. Keep company with me and you'll learn to live freely and lightly. See, Jesus is the best. Keep focus on him and lose the weight that is hindering you. Hebrews 10, says, Let us draw near to God with a sincere heart and with the full assurance that faith brings, having our hearts sprinkled to cleanse us from a guilty conscience and having our bodies washed with pure water. Question is, do you believe this? answer is, if you don't, you walked in here with the same weight that you had on, that you're going to walk out with. Jesus is better than any of your burdens, better than your shame or guilt. It is a question of faith. Do you believe? And see, the thing is, we have this thing, Pastor, I don't want to do this because I'm not worthy that's why you're in church. None of us is worthy. None of us has earned it. None of us could buy it. You could be on any committee of the church. You could be on all the committees of the church. That doesn't make you worthy. That we call the grace of God. You can't buy it. You receive it. So, but if you do believe, if it is a yes, then fix your eyes on Jesus and don't give up. Will you bow your heads with me? Almighty and gracious God, help us to focus. Help us to put binders like horses in a race that cover our eyes and all they can do is see straight ahead. Let's fix our eyes on you. Even doing that doesn't mean that it's going to be easy. But it's going to be better. So help us to fix our eyes. Let's walk with you. Let's walk by faith. Let's fix ourselves on you, O oh God. And don't give up. It's in your mighty name that we pray. Amen and amen. Let's stand for our closing song. Since we have that grace, we're free. Now, we've done this song before. Whenever you see the parentheses, you're going to echo what we have just sung. So sing it loud and sing it proud. Bye.
I do not do this enough, okay? I want to thank the well. They're multiple talent of singing, <laughs> playing, playing. <laughs> that, that was for your benefit, okay? <laughs> no, all, all y'all, thank you so much for your talents and your grace. Receive this benediction. Don't give up. Don't give up. You've got the strength and the power of God behind you. There's nothing that can outdo him. So go in that strength. Go in that grace. Show the love to all in this world. And if you have to, use words. <laughs>